take the breath, the inhale and the exhale. If you are now judging the exhale as being bad and trying not to exhale, well, you know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> so the exhale is as important as the inhale. However, in us human beings, we are not doing it psychologically. Just because you have that history doesn't mean that you cannot liberate yourself in the here and now in this lifetime. Hello and welcome to The Real Success Show. I'm your host, Candice Mama. If you have always wondered to yourself, can light and darkness exist within you? And how do you banish the shadow sides of yourself? Today's guest is for you because he's going to talk about not having to banish the shadow side, but instead becoming friends with it. Mark Steinberg is an incredible teacher in this space, and I cannot wait to jump in. But before I do, you guys know the rhythm by now. It should be a song between us. If you like this podcast, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> okay, without further ado, here is Mark you for being on the real success show and we had such a great conversation pre this and somehow i'm going to figure out a way to edit it into this whole episode because it was fantastic and we were actually jumping into bio reactions but before we even get there because most people are going to think what on earth is a bio reaction <laughs> let's first get to consciousness right because that's the work you teach for the person who's just, you know, living life, they haven't come across this kind of terminology before. What is consciousness? Yes, thank you. Well, my company and organization's name is Creative Consciousness. So consciousness means that everything you do, you are aware of it, that it is a conscious choice. So you don't live just by impulse and reaction and then later on you reflect and you may regret your choices or what you have done. If you're conscious, you always have a, have a gap of reflection in your mind. That means that there's a moment and the freedom to choose, is this now um, constructive or destructive what I'm doing, right? Is it contributing or taking away? Is it um, creative or is it reactive this micro moment of reflection allows you to be a conscious person see when your partner in a relationship triggers you which happens all the time because you are human beings and nobody's perfect then you either can respond by reaction and then it goes the usual way we all know what that means or you respond by creation that means that in this moment before you are just snapping and saying whatever you say, you have a micro moment in which you are connecting usually to your higher values. And then from that value set, you are responding. And this is an entirely different way. That's why my programs are called, for example, conscious relationships, what I just gave you an example about. Conscious money, conscious success, conscious sales, right? conscious living. And the principle is you need to establish in yourself an awareness being switched on without any effort so that it is sustainable that allows you to make conscious choices. Mm. Conscious choices. I love that term because... I think as we grow up, we get so many things that get implemented into us, right? Like we get these little implants from our parents and then our, you know, environment and then the people we date. And before we know it, we assume we're conscious beings. We assume we make decisions based on what we want and who we are, which brings me to that bioreaction. What is a bioreaction and how do we actually do that? you probably need to cut here because I don't know what you mean by bio-reaction. Did I say bio? <laughs> Candice, Candice, no, no, no. That's not a term I'm going to use. I mean, use the term you want, Mark. <laughs> yes, yes. I was like, I can't respond now because I don't know. I don't actually know that word bio by a reaction, I said. Oh, you know, you can either act. By a reaction. I love it. <laughs> You're so sweet. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, so we're going to come back and we're going to yes. just, okay, so Mark, you know, as we're speaking about consciousness and conscious choice, 
the reactions we have towards situations and things constantly are something that we are grappling with. We assume this is what I want. This is what I'm just going to do. But so many of us are co- like operating from this subconscious place. So how do we change that? How do we start really becoming much more aware of, is this my reaction because I want it? Or is this a reaction that I'm just used to doing? Yeah, ideally, we need to achieve the freedom and the space to reflect on that for a moment before we actually commit to a particular action. Now, I said ideally. Why? Because what's in the way is, as you correctly said, you said we are, we believe we are conscious. Now, being conscious biologically, like in the hospital, means you are conscious. That only means that you are having your five senses switched on and you have the experience uh, that goes with the five senses and that maybe you are aware of your thoughts and your emotions many people not and that's all there is to being conscious in the normal definition of the term however when i say conscious i mean much more i mean the freedom to be able to choose with regard to either you act on your trigger or your reaction or whatever comes automatically into your mind, which for most people is the default state of living, or you can hold off being hijacked by those thoughts and emotions that are automatically spilled into your mind and ask yourself, what is it actually in this situation that I'm committed to? What is the value of my relationship? So you value your relationship more than your ego. It's not about winning. It's about contributing to a higher purpose. But for that, you need to have done some work beforehand. And that work means you need to engage in practices, trainings, retreats, Um, studies that allow you to become conscious of your own conditioning. If you are not conscious of your own conditioning, then the principle, what you don't own, owns you. Either you have your conditioning or your conditioning has you. There's nothing in between. There's no half pregnant. So it is critical to understand that, that what you are conditioned by that owns you is where you're coming from so you're not even aware of that it is there it's like a fish staring at the water not able to experience water because that's a natural environment for the fish or for the bird it is the air for human being having thoughts and emotions is the water what it is for the fish to become aware of that requires that you are having an awareness outside of that Now, that's when meditation starts. That's when shadow work starts. That's when the self-knowledge, know thyself. You know, the Oracle of Delphi, that's the first thing that is up there. And who are you in this context is the ancient question that every spiritual system or authentic religious system is asking you. The foundation as my teachers taught me, is you need to know yourself. You need to get to know yourself. And that means you are becoming aware of your conditioning. The moment I'm aware of my conditioning, something dramatically shifts from anger having me to me having anger. Now, if anger has me, then I only have a chance to suppress it. If I do that, well, good, because I probably will not hurt my environment or the other person. However, the suppressed anger energy is starting to work against me in my body. You know, that's when people get allergies. That's when people are um, unconsciously hurting their leg, et cetera, et cetera. So the anger energy doesn't disappear, just then works against you. Now, if you have anger because you discovered your conditioning and you are a conscious person, then you can choose to transform that anger into passion. It's the same energy. You don't suppress it. You change the quality of the energy. 
And now you can use your anger as an energy of passion to paint, to create a marketing plan, uh, to <laughs> even make love, right? To cook anything you can do now with the energy of passion. Pablo Picasso was a very passionate painter. You may not like his paintings. However, they are screaming, like, <laughs> right? They are loud. They are present. So whatever you do with the energy of passion makes you and your creation present. Therefore, we all need to start with taking a deep dive into our conditioning, into our mind. And this is done by an environment with teachers or processes or teachings that allow you to do that inquiry backed up by exercises. So you really can integrate what you have discovered, and then the shifts. When I work with people, it's all about creating that shift. If a person is obese and can't stop eating chocolate or whatever it is, it's because appetite is having them. Now, I now need to manage to get them through a process where the shift happens so that they have appetite. You want to have appetite because it makes things spicy. But if you have appetite and appetite doesn't have you, then you have a choice. You may not choose right now to eat that much, or you know when to stop. You can choose to eat at a different time when it's more healthy for your body. So you are now in charge. If appetite has me, I'm not in charge. I'm just finding my hand going to something and putting it into my mouth, and then I suffer, suffer the side effects, the consequences. And that accounts for every characteristic and everything in our lives. Mm. I love that. I love that explanation of it. And you mentioned so many things, Mark, and I'm going to touch on them at a certain point. But the one thing, and this is how we came into each other's orbit, is you also work with something called shadow work. And I love that. I love the principle of shadow work. I love what it represents. And most importantly, I love how you teach it. And for those people out there who are struggling with these parts of themselves that they consider bad, you know, or out there or like unlovable or whatever we choose to label it as, what is like shadow work? What is it in its, you know, fullest form? Yes. The shadow is everything that we are in resistance to in ourselves or outside of ourselves in resistance to, afraid of, worried about every judgment that is charged with energy. So where it is really personal is accompanied, or accompanied by a shadow. Every judgment creates a shadow. If I say this is good and there's charge attached, automatically I'm also saying this is bad. So I'm dividing the world into good and bad. And the bad stuff I don't want to deal with. The bad stuff I'm in opposition to. The bad stuff I want to fight. I can make even a great career out of that. However, the shadow principle is such an incredible law in the universe. Nobody can eliminate the polarity of whatever you are dealing with. Now, let's say, take the breath, the inhale and the exhale. If you are now judging the exhale as being bad and trying not to exhale, well, you know what's gonna happen, right? <laughs> so the exhale is as important as the inhale. However, in us human beings, we are not doing it psychologically. So we are usually a very, very, hard critic on ourselves. We have an inner judge. That's a voice between the, e between the ears that is often making us wrong, telling us how small we are, how stupid we are. And I have a good tip. When you hear that voice, that's already a first level of awakening, of awareness, of becoming conscious. But then when you hear that voice, Find out if that voice is talking in the second person or in the first person. If you find yourself saying, I am not good enough, then it's an identification that you picked up in childhood. 
if you find the voice saying you are not good enough, then it is your mom's or your father's or your caretaker's voice. Then it's that conditioning. All the voices in our head that torment us, that work against us, that we are consistently struggling with, trying to manage, suppressing it, trying to destroy it, we run away into addictions, we go into alcohol and all kinds of things because we have not learned to manage the inner voice. And I'm not talking about the positive voice. Nobody has a problem with a positive voice. It's about the negativity. And that is the shadow. So the shadow is the polarity to the light. And it's a human nature to divide the world into good and bad because then we find stability in what we are identified with. So if I'm saying this is good, then I, then it gives me safety. And the shadow doesn't, however, leave me alone. The shadow comes for me. So if I don't come for my shadows, my shadows will come for me because they are not running away. That's why it's called a shadow. It sticks on you, right? So you're not going to get rid of it. And there are so many incredible example, examples in people's lives where they try to have in the next relationship a different quality in the relationship. And who do they attract if they haven't worked on their shadows? It's the same stuff is going to happen again in the relationship just with a partner of a different shape, of a different face, but the same principles are happening. And this vicious circle is happening all over the place. It's just a matter of time. When does the shadow decide to come after you? So, you know, usually I need much more time to explain what the shadow really is, but maybe I managed to get across a little bit of an idea around that. Yeah, I love it. And I love your analogy of, you know, the breath, which is the inhale and exhale. And I think it makes it so simple to then be able to look at the concept holistically that you can't hate the inhale and love the exhale, right? They both work together. And I think that's the beauty of the holistic self-acceptance that all of us need. So, you know, the past two years, people have been in a very challenging place. People have, you know, experienced the differently. Some people have had like a relationship, you know, issues, some people financial, everyone is different. And for those people who are currently still in it and they say to you, Mark, you know, I like the spiritual stuff. It's amazing that you're talking about it, but I've got real life problems. I've got real money problems. How do I fix it? <laughs> what do you say? Yes. To you say oh God, oh God, oh God. I, 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 I absolutely know what you're talking about. You know, when people come to me and say exactly that, you know, like, oh, the spiritual stuff is super interesting, really fantastic, but I got a real life to live. Right? Then I'm like, okay, okay, so this, this needs some work now here. <laughs> so we need then to take a little bit of a journey into asking ourselves or going into reference material that is available on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, or my own teachings to open up the possibility for the person to notice that they are not disconnected or independent from what's happening out there. Their life is directly connected to who they are inside. Now, only on the foundation of that possibility further work is possible. Otherwise, people never bring the two together. If a person doesn't ask questions, when my partner is going into silence and distancing themselves from me, what does that reflect in that moment in my consciousness? What's going on in me as an energy that is causing this as an outside occurrence? A person who is starting to take a look at everything that happens in their lives, from from an um, economic crisis to the car breaking down, to being fired at the job, to catching an illness, to having no energy, and so on and so forth, all the troubles people are dealing with. 
if a person starts to try to find a link to their inner state, what does that reflect in me that I now lost again my investment or that I was betrayed again by my business partner? Because I say, and that's the foundation for my whole teaching, and by the way, I'm I'm in mean, good company. Joe Dispenza saying the same thing. Anthony Robbins is saying the same thing. Deepak Chopra. Everybody in the spiritual teaching arena is teaching the same things, just with different words. So people need to step into the possibility that everything that happens in their lives has directly something to do with who they are inside. As within, so without. As without, so within. And on that foundation, now we can talk. We can take a look at, okay, so your illness or your energy state or your relationship problems or this and that and that now has to do with what inner principle that lives as a belief system in your subconscious. Because shadows are reflecting our belief systems that we not have made conscious. And an executive that has um, always trouble with the team not performing or the team not really showing team qualities. So there's always quarrel, there's always conflict, there's always the need for motivation and the whole struggle and effort in a team. You know, if, I'm just using it as an example. The leader of that team needs to go into their shadows because the team is just reflecting a shadow that they don't own. Maybe they themselves don't want to be in a team, but they never admitted that. So they suppress it, that they usually, maybe their real inner belief is teams don't work. And then you find in your environment exactly the reflection of that. Maybe your inner belief system is that you don't deserve to be wealthy. Then you will find no matter what investments you make, they're all going to go down the Jordan one way or the other. And if you maybe are saying, having a belief that you should know not be great or not don't show up too big you know maybe that's what your father told you or your mom told you or your teacher told you that became a belief and then it became a shadow because you are ignorant of it or you don't want to deal with it but it plays out then in your life so your life is an exact mirror of what is true within yourself the good news is that what is true within yourself, you can change because it's in you. You need to do conscious work and you need to have tools to change belief systems. The moment a belief system in you is changed, that very moment, the, the um, shadow effects on how your life works is changing as well. It's a synchronicity process in the here and now. The moment you forgive, for example, your mother for the way she treated you, maybe she unconsciously humiliated you or unconsciously dominated you. And ever since you can't allow any woman to come close to you because you're shutting down, you don't want to be dominated and you can't get over that pattern, right? That's a shadow here. And there are, there are certain tools you can discharge a shadow one for example is the tool of forgiveness so then when you forgive your mother for what she has done to you and that needs to be a real forgiving in your heart so in your energy system and that is sealed and complete then suddenly you are free to allow the other person your partner in and they experience a whole new new you they suddenly feel that you are really with them. And then love is occurring and you are in a whole different world. And that is happening in every aspect of your life. Mm. So profound, so, so profound. And Mark, it makes me curious, and I'm sure our listeners are very curious. Have you always been the self-aware? No. I was, <laughs> I was having so much um, tr not tr uh, inner troubles with life. I didn't, I didn't like life very much when I was young. I went in, when I was 16, I went into depression. My parents actually got worried about me and took me to my first teacher. Um, back then, it was a psychologist 
who taught me the pr first principles of consciousness, etc. And that started to wake me up. So by pain and destiny guiding me into the right direction, I started the process of becoming aware of myself, aware of my conditioning. This then transformed into or transcended into a passion for awareness, which is also the title of my books, by the way. And that passion for awareness got me to India. I became a monk because I just loved what's happening in consciousness so much that I wanted to reach the summit of consciousness. I wanted to be completely liberated inside. I wanted to be conscious in everything. So I'm not going to hurt if any human being or whatever is living. And I just had this vision of being a happy contributional energy on this planet. And that set me up for doing everything I could in order to completely get into my conditioning, resolve all the shadows, resolve all the unconscious stuff, even go into my past lives and clean up there in order to be free in the here and now. Yeah, so um, it was work and it was ignited by pain, which is for 95% of people, I believe, the trigger. When they suffer strong enough and nothing helps anymore, then they usually are turning inside and starting to take a good look. And the old principle, when the student is ready, the teacher appears and then helps everybody to have a good teacher to do the steps that are required. Mm. Pain is such a great, you know, igniter of change because I think it is, you know, it's not in our most joyful moments that we're like, oh, I should go change my life. You know, you're like, I want to stay here forever. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark, it takes me back to, I had a conversation the other day and the person was speaking about generational trauma. They were speaking about generational patterns. And so how they said it was, you know, my great grandmother never knew how to keep a relationship. My mother didn't. My grandmother, my mother, no one in my family, no woman in my family have been able to keep a relationship. And therefore, I'm afraid that I won't be any different. And so from people who come from those kind of families where generationally they haven't had money or they haven't had love or whatever it may be, where do they begin to break what I call the generational curse and start a new pattern. Yeah, generational shadows or ancestor shadows or shadow patterns that are, you know, reaching far, far back into the history of your family where you're coming from. These shadows are heavy weights in the shadow world. Now, the principle of con nothing is superior to consciousness applies. That means that just because you have a history of, as you just beautifully uh, gave us an example, Candice, just because you have that history doesn't mean that you cannot liberate yourself in the here and now in this lifetime. So that's great news. How to do that? Behavioral change is not really successful in this one. You need to start becoming able to stop the pattern, not to do at the moment something else, just to stop that pattern. The pattern, for example, of closing down when your partner is becoming passionate or the pattern of punishing yourself, the pattern of exiting a relationship because you just feel claustrophobic. And whatever pattern there is that, you know, destroys relationships, this is a pattern to completely bring into the light. So you bring the shadow into the light, you go into your underworld, from there you take it into the light of awareness, you take a look at it, and this awareness that is looking at your reactions that are causing the troubles in your life, this awareness is your door into freedom. That's where the solution is. It is in this awareness. In this awareness, 
you are then able to make a different choice. In this awareness, you need to start settling in. In this awareness, you can create a new version of yourself that is independent from your history. You cannot change your history. However, you can choose a different future. But it needs to be on the foundation of you completely owning your conditioning. Otherwise, it's just positive thinking. You can't expect to have a different life by, you know, um, repeating affirmations on top of a strong belief system. That's ridiculous. It doesn't work. It doesn't change a thing. It mesmerizes yourself for a moment because you are like watching a movie. You know, you are in the movie. And if it's an exciting movie, you are excited for a few hours still after the movie. But the morning, the next morning when you wake up, you are back to who you normally are. That's why positive thinking and affirmations do not have an impact on the deeper belief systems. You only can get to your deeper belief systems through awareness of your conditioning, then making the shift I was already talking about from conditioning having you to you having conditioning. And then in this awareness, you have a new possibility of creating a you that is independent from the past. And with that new you, you just need to remain in that you so that your brain now has time to catch up with you because your brain has been conditioned to function in the old synoptic networks that make you do the same things over and over again, producing the same results. Now that needs to change. First, your awareness, a new you, that is the whole philosophy and methodology of creation. And then you need to give time to your brain to rewire. When that is complete, you are a new person. You have the same body and even your body is now catching up with your light. And that makes you shine. And then your lifeness comes back and people say to you, oh my God, what happened to you? Right? And you are just in that state of like a youngster having fallen in love again with life. It's beautiful. I love that. I absolutely love it. And have you heard about the term of toxic positivity? Because as you were speaking about affirmations, it actually brought that term. And basically the idea of toxic positivity is when the new spiritual movement happened, you know, when the secret came out, when everything was, you know, coming into consciousness, uh, a lot of people assumed that you could not have any other emotion that wasn't happiness. And therefore, if you were engaging in an emotion that wasn't completely happy and positive and you weren't saying affirmations all the time, that your life would be destroyed, that you were never going to attract anything good. Everything in your life was always going to be at that feeling, right? And so I want your perspective on it. For people who have just discovered this world and they are doing their affirmations, but they're so afraid, Mark, they're so afraid of feeling anything that's not happy, where do they begin with that? Where do they begin with that process? Spiritual bypassing. That's what you are talking about, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, the excitement when you are starting to suddenly realize that there's a connection between the inside and the outside, and then you learn spiritual principles, you learn about energy, you have an energy body and high frequencies and low frequencies. That's super exciting stuff. I'm excited about that. And of course, everybody who is in resonance with that gets excited about that. Now, that then, but it totally also depends on the teacher. Huh? Um, when I have the privilege to initiate people, that means they haven't done much spiritual work before. So, and I'm the teacher from the very beginning. I'm not allowing spiritual bypassing at all because I'm bringing into awareness from the very beginning do not start a war with your exhale. <laughs> right? <laughs> so you need to just develop a awareness that gives you an umbrella where you are in a gap. So you have the inhale and you have the exhale. And then from there, you make your choices. So I teach it from the very beginning. Now, when that is not taught, then spiritual teachings can build a fundamentalistic perspective this is right, 
And the moment you say this is right, you also say this is wrong. And then the spiritual principle is a principle that carries a lot of shadows. There are a lot of spiritual teachings out there. They are beautiful, but they carry shadows. And it's not the spiritual teaching. Some are, but most of them not. It's more the teachers that make it now a doctrine. You know? Then people are afraid to phrase anything in a negative way. I teach, I say, hey, the affirmation itself has no power. Your relationship to the affirmation has power. So if you say, I'm not going to smoke anymore and, or I'm not going to drink anymore, if that has power and if that's what you mean is not to pick up the cigarette or not to pick up the glass, if that's what you mean, then by all means, keep that affirmation exactly the way that it works for you. No? I inhale fresh, clean air. I mean, that has for many people no power. Right, but not to smoke that might have a lot of power, so it's in the meaning of it. But this is just a small example, you know. Then people are afraid to reach out with their left hand, or when they draw a card, they do all kinds of rituals. And I mean, please, I'm not gonna, I don't want to offend anybody. I'm just saying, if we are giving it a interpretation, a label, a judgment that it needs to be done this way otherwise it's wrong this moment we create a shadow again and then the shadow will come for us it will prove us wrong and then we're going to go maybe into fighting with it and then the whole the whole drama is starting <laughs> it's not necessary um, to to provoke the shadow in this way we just need to really um yeah, look at it from a from an inclusive perspective. And the inclusive perspective, I bring people back to the inhale exhale because there's nothing better to reflect on. Let the exhale be the exhale. It needs to happen for the inhale to come back and gives you life. And this is with the darkness exactly the same thing. You don't need to be darkness, but you need to have a space for darkness to be. Otherwise, there cannot be light. Otherwise, there is no existence in the first place. <laughs> yeah, that is a great way to look at it. Like without the light, there can be no darkness and vice versa. And I think that is a great philosophy. And I also think it is a good way for people to start forming a better relationship with themselves and also a better relationship with the world around them. And so yes. when it comes to, you know, something like a relationship, I, I love that you, you're constantly using it as an example, because we always say our romantic partners become our biggest mirrors, right? It becomes this great dance of you think you've done the work, you get into a relationship, then you're like, then I do any work. <laughs> you know? So I guess the question that I usually get is, you know, Candace, I'm doing all this work on myself. I am, you know, doing, you know, the spiritual, spiritual stuff. I'm eating well. I'm like, I'm trying my best to live an authentic life. However, it seems as though I attract, so not before we even get into the relationship pattern in and of itself, the kind of human being that comes into my life tends to be the same, whether it's they flighty and they're running away or they're not, you know, they're not emotionally available, whatever it is. Where should people be starting when they're on that journey? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful question. So if you bring that to me and I were your teacher or your coach, the, the pattern is interesting. The pattern is showing that before you even are allowing yourself to be gotten, you are protecting yourself by attracting people who are not even trying <laughs> to get you. Right? It's a self-protective phenomenon that is happening here and the core i'm just making a shortcut because we are here in a in an uh, interview situation the core is you are afraid to be gotten you are afraid of intimacy when it comes to a certain point where your heart needs to really open up and allowing the other person in you probably don't trust people and that's why you're already attracting the wrong people so you don't even need to deal with getting rid of them after you realize in the relationship that it doesn't work 
Does that make sense? It does so much. <laughs> and I think it, it makes so much sense, especially if you are someone who's doing your work, right? You can understand that. You can understand that principle. However, then when does the work with that begin? Because I feel like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like what you are describing is such a deep-seated subconscious reaction, right? Because I'm assuming the person who's coming to me, and I've been on this path as well, is not coming from a place of like not trying to do the work. They are trying to yeah. be conscious, they're doing it. So that must be super subconscious. So how do you even access that and bring it to the forefront so you can heal it? All right. So I would say come to my heart retreat. The purpose here is to come to grips with where when is it that your heart is closing and then you come to the armor around your heart the armor that has protected you from not gonna experience a pain that you are not willing to feel because it was too painful back then and you don't want to go back into that trauma of that painful experience and this protection mechanism me mechanism as human understandable it is however it doesn't allow you to open up. That means inside of who you are, you feel alone because you can't let people in. And you can't, you, you also cannot surrender to life and therefore be liberated um, from the in, um, inside box where people usually live in. So what are we going to do? We need to put you into particular situations. One could be, for example, that a partner appear in the retreat or one of my trainees, uh, pro uh, protégés, or even myself, you know, if you're a really hard case and I work directly with yourself. So I sit in front of you and I'm just present to you. We have eye contact and I'm now coming into you with my energy and you need to now open up, open up. And you will see that there is something a reflex from the subconscious, as you said, Candice, that is shutting me down, that is closing in, closing in. And in this, but I'm held by the presence of having eye contact with a conscious person. So in this constellation, I can now do the work. There are particular tools that I'm asking you then to do, et cetera, et cetera, that allow you to find ways to open the armor of your heart so that you can starting to come back into life. You are starting to trust one little step after the next. It doesn't need to be rushed. You know, you do one step and okay, it's safe. Now you can show up a little bit more. Okay, it's safe. Open up a little bit more. And now comes the memory of the pain when mom let you down or, or dad um, abandoned you or whatever the original pain was when you needed to close. So you open up, you open up, and we need to do that as long as it's required until you feel safe in remaining open. And then you have returned back to life because nobody can experience life as a joyful ride who, are not, who, 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 who is not open. Hmm. That is beautiful, Mark. That is so beautiful. Like everything you're saying, it's so resonant, I think. It makes so much sense. And I think the people that are on that journey will completely understand everything you said and they'll, they'll feel it vibrationally. I always say, you know, with any interview with any teacher, because people are like, Candice, how do we choose the right teacher? There's so many there. And I always say, your soul will let you know. The right teacher Beautiful. for you will just vibrate. You'll feel it. Will, it won't be a question. It will just feel right. Then if it's not for you, you'll resist it. You'll just keep being like, I'm not sure this doesn't, you know, but I feel like that message was so resonant that it's going to resonate with so many people. As we draw to the end of our interview, I want to ask you about soulmates. You know, that's another mm. philosophy, especially in the consciousness movement. Is there this one incredible, perfectly sculpted human being, Mark, that is out there for each human being that's their own individual soulmate? <laughs> You're opening a big box here. Huh? You're opening a big box. Mm, 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 mm. Don't know even where to start, Candice. Um, 
I know, of course, the soulmate, um, yeah, philosophy or, you know, what, what, but first of all, souls don't mate, right? Mating is not something that is a soul thing. <laughs> 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 to get that out of the way, then we have this idea. Now, where does that idea come from? It comes from obviously a notion that you have a partner that doesn't cause you any troubles. In other words, you want to be in the comfort zone from the get-go. In other words, you probably have never become an adult because you are still trying to get back to the womb. Because in the womb, what you had was no disturbance, absolute perfect comfort zone, you know, you, no paying rent and automated food supply and no gravity issues. If you seek that in a relationship, you're in the wrong game. Seriously, you're in the wrong game. And the shadow doesn't allow you to meet your soulmate in quotation marks anyway until you resolve your shadows. Now, when I worked through my relationships and the stuff that was coming up for me in response or in just being related to a partner that I share my house with and my life with, etc., so I needed a half a dozen relationships until I worked through everything, thank God, successfully. And then after one, one and a half years of being a single, I met Gila. She's my life partner ever since. We are living together on Crete. But that wasn't like, oh, here's my soulmate. It was a much more silent, hidden development. And then the flower opened. And none of, any, none of that characteristics that were displayed by my former partners that triggered reactions in me through which I needed to work through is in her. So life gave me what people maybe, you know, call a soulmate. But it was earned, earned by me becoming ready for that. Yeah. Um, but, but really, because I did the work in deconditioning myself from all the reactions to go into reactions with my former partners. And I believe if it's like that for everyone, if there's a law behind it, when people really working through their relationship and make it a relationship, they deserve perfect partner absolutely with you and when the shadow is gone i tell you it's going to happen for, for all of us perfect answer i love it we are coming to our final two questions and the first one is for mark steinberg what is real success to you real success is when you're experiencing things are working, things are just working and you are in a flow state where energy is just as an infinite and inexhaustible supply coming through you and what you are igniting is flourishing. And that gratitude that you experience when your business is flourishing doesn't mean that there are no obstacles, but the way you are responding to the obstacles, all of that is without the contraction energy, without the struggle. You're passionately engaging in making things work. You are a force of solutions, not a complaint about problems. And real success means that you are inside of yourself whole. In other words, you are in a state of love. And this love is the greatest reward at the end of each month of an entrepreneur or anybody who is engaged in business and, and in work. And for me, that's real success, that you are just a force of love and inspiring others with your state, with your energy. And uh, then, when you do that, 
and that's by the way in the meaning in the biblical saying thy seeketh their kingdom of heaven first and then everything will be given to you so kingdom of heaven is consciousness is love is what is that that divine state and you bring that in to your business as a state as i just explained then everything will be given to you means beautifully that the money the fame the genius the creativity the growth life gives it to you you don't need to take it from life. Life gives it to you. And at the end of the day, all that's left is thank you, thank you, thank you, gratitude, thank you. <laughs> oh, that is a beautiful, beautiful answer. And the final question is, and feel free to answer it however you like, um, what is one thing about Mark Steinberg that we will not find on Google? <laughs> oh my god how can you come up with a question like that <laughs> 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 oh, I take I take that question, you know, and and uh, I make it I make it subject of my meditation a little bit. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm afraid I will not be able to answer that question. I love it, and I love the honesty. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, Mark, this has been <laughs> an absolute just incredible conversation and an absolute well, thank you to engage with you so thank you for being on the real success show thank you so much and uh, can't wait for 2022 when we are sailing to new shores and uh, new levels of success so if we don't speak to each other then i wish you a great festive season and um Lots of uh, discoveries with your choice to stay where you are and to find out what you, what you need to find out. And uh, yeah, on New Year's, I will give internally a good one of the vodka shots to the team and to you and to <laughs> Saj and to Lisa. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I Thank you. And I'll be doing an external tequila shot for you. <laughs> no. External vodka shots, you know. Um, <laughs> on New Year's Eve, I have developed in my shadow retreat, I, I shared with people, I have developed a way of conscious alcohol intake. So we take vodka, best what we can get in Egypt, or tequila. The choice is for the group between vodka or tequila. And then we have a conscious ceremony of intake, and everybody chooses already at lunchtime, how many shots they're going to intake, and so on and so forth. So this can be a marvelous experience. Maybe one day I can inspire you to take seven days out of your busy schedule and come to the shadow retreat and enjoy the incredible things we are doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to take much convincing. I feel it. I feel like you and I are definitely going to work together some. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my dear. With big love. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and um, good, good to have you in my life. Thank you, Candice. Oh, thank you, Mark. I feel the same. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Oh, my goodness. I cannot think of a better episode for this time of the year. I hope you loved it as much as I did. And as usual, I always recommend going back and watching episodes you may have missed. And if you are not watching us on YouTube, you are probably listening to us. So be sure that you listen to any episodes you might have missed. It has been an honor to serve you today. And I look forward to doing it again next week.